Hi guys, just wanted to take a couple of minutes to show you how to solve dihybrid crosses. Up until this point, we've been solving uh, monohybrid crosses where we just cross one single trait at a time, but now we're going to be crossing two traits at a, at a time. It is used to illustrate the law of independent assortment. Um, look at this first problem. It says wolves are sometimes observed to have black coats and blue eyes. Assume further that normal coat color is dominant to black and brown eyes are dominant to blue. Suppose the alpha male and the alpha female of the pack, these are the individuals who do most of the breeding, are black with blue eyes and normal colored with brown eyes, respectively. The female is heterozygous for both traits. So when solving these problems, or all problems I should say, I always underline the meaning of all the traits. So normal coat color is dominant to black. Brown eyes are dominant to blue, okay? That's the first thing I underline. The second thing I look for is what are the actual parents? Well, they told me that the male is black with blue eyes and normal colored with brown eyes is the female. And it tells you that the female is heterozygous for both traits. So we'll start with the alpha male. He's black with blue eyes. Well. The only way a wolf is going to be black is to be little n, little n, because it is the recessive allele. The only way he's going to have blue eyes is, again, to be little b, little b, okay? Notice this time, instead of having just one trait, I have both. I have the coat color and I have the eye color for the male. The female is normal colored, with brown eyes and they told you she was heterozygous. So she will be big N, little n, and big B, little b, since she's heterozygous for both traits. Okay, this is what I think is the most difficult part about solving dihybrid crosses. You take one of the individuals, so we'll start with the male, and you're going to come up with the four possible gametes that can be obtained from this. So like the four possible combinations. So the way I do this is I take the first letter, this one, with the first one of the second. That is one possible gamete, and I write it across the top. The second combination is this same first one coupled with the last one. It's the same thing. The third possible combination, I take the second one coupled with the first one, and then the last one, here it is. And in this case, this one's pretty simple because all four gametes are identical. Those of you familiar with FOIL from math, it's, it's like first, outer, inner. It, it's the same thing. You're coming up with the four possibilities just like you do when you are multiplying in math. Okay, that's the male. Now to do the female, I do the exact same thing, but notice she's different because she was heterozygous. So her gametes are going to be different. But again, I use the same process and I always do them in the same order so it doesn't confuse me. I take the first one and I pair it with the first one in the second trait, capital N, capital B. The first one again, coupled with the second one, capital N, lowercase b. Now on to the second half, the second one with this one the lowercase n, capital B. And then finally, the last combination, lowercase n, lowercase b. Notice the female gives you four different gametes. It's not the same gametes as the male. Now, in order to fill the boxes, I'm gonna do exactly what I did before. I'm gonna cross the individuals into the box, but in order to make it easy to read, I'm going to keep the letters together, keep the traits and the alleles together but I'm gonna continue my pattern of always writing the dominant before the recessive. So like in this case, I'm gonna go with N's before B's and I'm gonna keep the dominant before the recessive. So these and these into this box, which would be capital N, lowercase n, capital B, lowercase b. Notice I got the N from here, the N from here, the capital B from here, and then the lowercase b from here. So it doesn't matter. Um, it just makes it easier to read if you keep, if you jumble all the letters, it's, it's much more difficult. So I keep all the ends first so that when I read it, I can interpret it from the top using my letters that are together. So then 
if I go on to cross the next one, since this one is actually the same as this one, what you'll notice is you're going to get the exact same thing. You're gonna get the capital N from here, the dominant trait, and then the recessive from there, the dominant trait from here, and then the recessive from here. So in reality, I don't really have to fill in the rest of this row because I can already see the pattern. They're actually gonna be the same. So the only ones that are gonna be different are gonna be these boxes. But other than that, the whole row is gonna be identical to whatever the first thing it is that you fill in. So I don't need to go through and fill everything in. Now, if you're not sure, then you should fill in every single box in the same way. So again, I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna cross them and put them in here. Capital N, lowercase n, lowercase b, lowercase b, and these came from here. And if I went through and I filled in the entire row, again, the male had the same possible gametes. The only thing the male can donate to its offspring is a lowercase n and a lowercase b. All it is carrying is a recessive allele, so there's no need for me to fill in all these boxes because I know they're going to be identical to this first one. So I move on to the next one. Lowercase n, lowercase n, capital B, lowercase b, Row is identical, so I'm not gonna fill it all in. And then the last one, lowercase n, lowercase n, coming from here, lowercase b, lowercase b, and the row is the same, okay? And that's how you complete the square. Now, the way you have to interpret this, so if you look at the questions, number one, what are the genotypes of the possible offspring? Well, there are actually four genotypes that are possible. The genotypes, if you remember, is the genetics, it's the letters that go in there. The four possible genotypes are going to be capital N, lowercase n, capital B, lowercase b. That's the first one. Then the second one is right here. Then the third one, right here. And then the fourth one is right here. Then my next question is, number two is, what percent of the offspring will be normal colored with blue eyes? Well, let's see what all these letters and all these traits, um, what did the different alleles stand for? So if I go back up to my problem, it tells me that the capital N was normal colored and the lowercase n was black, the dominant trait was brown eyes and the recessive was blue. So if I go back up here and I look at my first four, these four wolves are gonna be normal colored with brown eyes because the dominant Allele is gonna cover the recessive, so normal colored with brown eyes. The next ones are gonna be normal colored with blue eyes because it's got the two little, the two recessive alleles there. It's gonna give me blue eyes. These animals are going to be black with brown eyes, all four of them. And these four are going to be black with blue eyes. So the question was, what percent of the offspring will be normal colored with blue eyes? That's these four, the four, the row. It's the same thing as when you worked out a four square punnet. The entire thing was 100%. One row of this is four out of the 16. That is still 25% of the entire thing. Okay, and I could continue to answer all sorts of questions if I were asked how many are going to be normal colored and brown eyes, I could do the same thing. If I were asked to list um, really all kinds of questions that could come from this, okay? Second problem. In pepper plants, green fruit color is dominant to red and round fruit shape is dominant to square fruit shape. These two genes are located on different chromosomes. Cross two plants, heterozygous for both traits. Okay, so they're telling me green is dominant to red. They're telling me round is dominant to square. And they're telling me to cross two plants that are heterozygous for both traits. So if I were writing these as two plants heterozygous for both traits, again, we're dealing with two traits at the same time. You're looking at big G, little g, big R, little r. <clears throat> and since they're both the same, the good news is I'll only have to do this once to come up with the four possible gametes. So again, to come up with my four possible gametes, 
I look at the genotype of the parent and I make my four possible combinations. So it's gonna be capital G with capital R. It's gonna be capital G with lowercase r. It's gonna be lowercase g with capital R. And it's gonna be lowercase g with lowercase r. There's no need for me to do this again because the other parent is identical to the top. They are both heterozygous, so I'm just going to copy the same ones along the side because I don't have to do it again. But again, I got it in the same way. It was the first pair and then the second and then the third pair and then the fourth pair, but they just happen to be identical. I'm gonna cross it just like I did the top one. The only difference now is that since the parents are all different and I didn't have the same pattern, I didn't have the same pattern as I had up here, it's gonna change my squares and I'm going to be forced to actually complete the entire square, okay? So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna cross them in here. Capital G, capital G, capital R, capital R. I'm gonna keep with the pattern of putting G's before R's, makes it easier to read. I'm gonna cross the second one in here. Capital G, capital G, capital R, lowercase r. Capital G, lowercase g, two capital R's. Capital G, lowercase g, capital R, lowercase r. Second row. I'm gonna keep going. And as you can see, all of these boxes are different. Some are repeated, but for the greater part, they all look different. This is crossing two heterozygous parents, gives you the greatest variety that you'll have in any one of these. Typically, um, two rows will be the same or you'll have one where one row is the same or half the Punnett square is the same, but two heterozygous parents gives you the most variety. This is a worst case scenario in regards to combinations. And again, I'm crossing them exactly the same. I'm running my G's before my R's and I'm keeping my dominant before my recessive genes, okay? Okay, so then my question is, what is the genotypic and phenotypic ratios of the offspring? Okay, and I'm actually probably going to run out of room here. So I'm gonna grab another sheet so that I can complete this.